What a difference a year can make. Just think back to last spring, March 8th, 2020. Just how different the world was compared to how it is now on March 8th, 2021. The difference is jarring. It was at the very start of a pandemic. The world stage was shutting down with many different players at the forefront. And life overall was massively changing. But nobody in NASCAR probably has had as massive of a change than Kyle Larson. Before the pandemic, Larson was a driver on the brink of championship contention in his Chip Ganassi-owned number 42 Chevrolet. Larson looked to be on the forefront of a youth revolution in 2020's NASCAR. Because at the start of the year, the youngsters were quick, and they included guys like Alex Bowman, Chase Elliott, and Ryan Blaney. Even with the break that was taken due to COVID concerns, it was pretty common thinking to still think of Larson as a top driver in 2020. But between March at the Phoenix race and May at the return of Darlington, a lot had changed. And by the time that NASCAR returned at Darlington, it was not Kyle Larson in that 42 car. iRacing events had taken the place of real racing in NASCAR's absence. And with it, a new frontier was being forged upon, and many drivers had not been in this position before. And with it came the greatest professional screw-up in Kyle Larson's career. You can't hear me? Hey, oh! Oh! Oh, oh, oh my oh. gosh! No way! Oh. No way did that just happen. Kyle, you're talking to everyone, but... Yikes! <laughs> Take it from me. I'm someone who's screamed hundreds of times over the last couple years. It's something that you have to work up to. And these drivers were woefully unprepared. But even with being unprepared for streaming, that still is no excuse for what Kyle Larson said. It's something that you just don't cross when it comes to that line. In an instant, it looked as though the career of Kyle Larson was over. It truly is what it felt like at that time. It felt like he was done. It was a national story. Everybody in the country was covering it. I'm talking the biggest news companies, all of the sports broadcasts, everybody was talking about it because nothing else was on. So the big thing for NASCAR was, oh, a NASCAR driver said the N-word. But throughout the next year, Larson slowly but surely worked to redeem himself. Working with and learning from members of the black community, with this came more of an openness to give Larson redemption. And while many, for many rightful reasons, keep his on-track and off-track dealings separate, there is a connection. This still is one man we are talking about, and what he does in each area of his life reflects on who that man is as a whole. So when Rick Hendrick gave him a new beginning, driving the number five Chevy for him, people were quite mixed with their reactions. On the driving side, there's no question that Larson is incredibly talented. After being suspended from NASCAR, he went on a tear across the ranks of races in the dirt track racing series, punctuated by his dominant victory in the Chili Bowl. And while dirt racing isn't a perfect one-to-one -one comparable ratio in forms of racing to NASCAR Cup Series racing, it is a legitimate form of racing that displays just how much skill he has as a driver. So while it's a surprise about how quickly Larson has dominated a race and won it, it is not as much a surprise that he's excelling in Hendrick Motorsports equipment. And with him at least running fast in every race in 2021, all he really needs to do now is run fast at Phoenix to cement himself being basically one of, if not the, favorite for the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series Championship. And seeing how this is one of his best tracks, and that aside from an engine issue in 2017, he's finished lower than 12th only once since 2015, you have to think that he's going to be in contention. Oh, and just reminding you right now, this is the team that ran 5th last November with a Jimmy Johnson that was pretty much cooked. So, they have a good track record at Phoenix. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. The big story right now is Kyle Larson winning in damn good fashion at Las Vegas. This was a statement win. A statement to all the people who said that Larson wouldn't be able to come back and immediately win. And I will admit right now, I was one of those people. I thought Larson was over time going to get better. 
I thought he was going to struggle at first because he hasn't been in these cars for so long, but get better in the second half of the season. And maybe that might be true, and the competition better hope not. But I will admit I was wrong there. Larson's been fast every week. And the thing is, he didn't run his best race yesterday. The race he ran at Las Vegas was full of mistakes. There were a number of restarts where he'd get burned. During the race, he also missed pit road on his final attempt at a green flag pit stop. And Rick Hendrick himself said in the post-race pressers that the pit crews overall at Hendrick were a point of concern that needed improvement. So if this is just basically B-level new age Kyle Larson, the competition should genuinely fear him because when this man gets on his A-game, when this whole team is clicking later in the season, he might be damn near unbeatable. So as a driver, he's completed his comeback if you ask me. Unless your definition is for him to win a championship, then I guess you can say he didn't. But overall, to me, it's completed. You can't really argue it on the driving side. But overall, his comeback socially, I don't think ever will be concrete. It can be a consensus choice by society and by NASCAR fans, but it's never going to be as concise as the on-track production will be. What Larson said will hurt some groups more than a lot of others. With some people, him taking up different causes will help mend the wounds, but for others, he's dead to them. To many, he will always be known as NASCAR's N-word guy, the NASCAR driver who said the N-word. That's something that's not going to leave him anytime soon, if ever, in some degree. All Larson can do is be the best he can on and off the track, learn from his mistakes, and just be better. This will 100% be a continuing story that, as the year goes on, and as years go on, that people are going to be watching. Today is merely a snapshot in a broader story and a broader picture. And... Who knows where that leads? It has a bit of a darker past, but for Larson, it could have a really, really bright future. What we think today will be different than what we think in a year's time. On March 8th, 2022, everything I said here might be all moot. Or everything I said here might be leading to something better for Larson and NASCAR as a whole. It's something that continues to need time. And I think that Larson knows this, and I think he's prepared for that. You can't help but think he has to be. But for me, that's all I got. Now, I want to know what you think. What do you think about Kyle Larson's work in progress of redemption? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. Until next time, have a good one.